My name is Dr. John Sapola, and I'm going to talk through the Allstate 2017 KMEA music for you on clarinet. The slow piece, the first challenge for me, I think, is tuning. So you want to tune that first low, that first open G, and then the second uh, big challenge is for me in, a, in an overall way is where to put some breath marks. I say that the tuning of the first note is important because once you establish that note, all the other notes that you're playing compared to that note uh, intervallically may make that low G that you initially play uh, sound a little bit stuffy or a little bit out of tune. So each of your instruments probably play a little differently and react differently. So what I would recommend is to use a tuner. I can show you the one that I like to use. I have a one called Clear Tune, and so the first way I start to practice is I play a note with this tuner and then this, uh, after this I like to actually play a note with an audible tuner. So let me give you an example first. Here is my open G. If you find that the note is a little flat, which it can be, I sometimes press my bottom side right key right here. The second thing I do with the tuner is, uh, in order to tune, is I pull up another type of a tuner, and let me just find it on my iPad. It's called a tonal energy tuner. And so it looks kind of like this. So what I do is I actually hook it with a Bluetooth speaker and I let it play a note. So let me give you an example. I set this one here on clarinet. B flat clarinet. In fact, when I'm tuning my, my clarinet, I find if I put this one on the bass clarinet setting, it actually sounds pretty good for me to tune with. Um, so let me lower my volume a little bit, and I'll now play my open G here, and I'll also press the sustain button. So I'll press sustain and uh, my G, and a little bit of a volume. Now I'm going to play the note and match it with my ear. And so this kind of practice, first using the visual tuner and second using an audible tuner, will help you really, number one, to warm up and get your air moving, but number two, to really start to hear intervallically, which is really a big part of tuning. Okay, so now the actual excerpt. Uh, breath marks, when we look at every time that we have a rest, so in the beginning, the second measure, obviously you'll take a breath there, then you play the next phrase. What I'm doing here is actually for my G sharp and my A, throat G sharp here and A like this, especially for the A, I like to leave my third finger down here and sometimes my third finger here in my pinky on the bottom C, uh, C and F key. Sometimes I even put my whole right hand down. So what I'm going to do here is when I come from my G sharp, my, my uh, B to D, instead of going like this to the G sharp, I'm going to leave a lot of the fingers down. After my A, like this, I let them go to play my throat F, like this. So it helps the sound to be more even throughout. So you could just practice lifting those fingers off uh, when you go from your A to your F. All right, let's go forward. Now the next phrase, starting on the end, the, the last measure of the first line, Make sure you start that phrase not too loudly so that you have room to crescendo. And then we're going to have to find a place for a breath. And I think a good place to breathe is after the high G. Now you can breathe optionally there, or if you think you can make the whole phrase, then try it without the breath. Let's go ahead and 
didn't talk about that little sideways S. That is called a grappetto or a turn. And so we play our initial note, the G, and then we're going to play the note above it in the key signature, A, then back to your G, and then down to an F sharp, in other words, the note below it. But since this particular measure has an F sharp in the high register, higher octave, we're going to play an F sharp. So you're going to hold the G for a moment, play a little uh, A, G, F sharp, G again, and then go right to your B. We have two options, of course, on the, on the clarinet, the right-handed B or the left-handed B. I like, in, a lot of times, if I'm using my right hand, I like to use my uh, right hand for these first three fingers. I like to keep my pinky over here, too. So it gets, gives me a chance after I play my, when I play this little turn and I come up after the F sharp to my G, instead of leaving my G completely open, I'm actually going to put my right hand down, including the right hand B. And it's kind of just like a split second that I put my right hand down and that enables the B to come out nice and smooth. So when I smoothly, so when I play from my G to my B. The next thing, uh, the next phrase is again a long phrase. And so if you need a breath and in here in that last excerpt, I tried to breathe uh, after the quarter notes just to give you a sense of what it would sound like if you breathe there. You're trying to basically make a, a, a nice crescendo over the course of this entire one, two, three, three or four bar phrase at the end here. So again, choose your breaths carefully. A nice way to breathe is if you decrescendo a little bit at, at the end of uh, a note to make it sound like it's, it's a natural part of the phrase. Okay, let's talk about a couple of fundamentals. When I use, uh, when I form an embouchure on the clarinet, I usually like to say the letter Q like this, and I keep my corners firm and my chin kind of flat. And then I have my lower lip a little bit flush against my lower teeth like this. And then I just wedge the clarinet in. I don't bite onto the reed, I just keep it nice and firm. So it's very natural. When I do that, the next step is I wanna have breath from down below. A nice solid breath so I'm really engaging the core in here and um, then when I blow I'm actually kind of blowing against my top upper teeth uh, here between where the gum line meets the teeth so so my embouchure is formed like this the lower lip is flush against the teeth and I'm blowing my air rather than blowing my tongue is a little bit higher in the air and you can hear the difference in the sound. When I change the position of my tongue. One other thing we can talk about is keeping my hands relaxed. So when I rest my hand like this and I lift it up, my hands have a natural curve. I find the clarinet like this and what I do is I have a, a nice little sort of diagonal on the left hand, on the right hand, and the same on the right hand. So you want to avoid going straight uh, at like a 90 degree angle like this. That way you can access these keys and you can access these keys up here like this. When we articulate, I say t -t 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 -t, and I always want to have a steady air flow through. So I first put my tongue on the tip of the reed, just under the tip of the reed. I press my air gently and then I gently release my tongue, the sound produces, and then I gently put my tongue back, and that's a, a staccato note. And the constancy here is the air. So as long as the air is moving steadily, you're in good shape. Okay, I hope that was helpful, and please let me know if there's any comments below. Uh, down below, if you have any uh, questions, I'm happy to answer them if I can. Thanks everyone and have a great day.